Okay, so the rain has picked up a great deal, but we still have quite a, quite a distance to drive. So it's quite possible it may not be raining in the area where we're going because we have quite a ways to go. Sometimes you can have rain in one area and just go 10 miles away and you won't see rain. But it just shows you that you can't always depend on the forecast because they said rain in the afternoon, not the morning. Here we are, early morning, and we're getting rain. Not in the afternoon like they speculated. But hopefully this will subside. So I have seen in some areas, like in the distance there, I'm seeing sunshine. And you see how now it's dry. <laughs> We just hit a patch of rain back there, but it's already stopped. So I'm hoping that that's all we'll experience and have an opportunity to get the work done that we anticipated doing today. But yeah, those just a little patch of rain. We've already hit dry land, dry area, dry air, which is good, which is good. So again, we shall see.
Okay, so we just came up on our exit and it's a little bit of rain. Judging from the ground, I think it's wet enough to where we won't be able to get much cut down today. So a lot of our work will probably be on the inside. But nonetheless, nonetheless, we are almost here. should I say our new home when when the time comes of course we won't be moving here for some quite some time now but we get here and it is raining it is very clear that we will not be doing any work outside today I think I did mention to brother Watchmen <laughs> that we were expecting rain today but you know what in all fairness, they did say the afternoon. And so we thought we had at least some morning hours to work, didn't we? Yeah, that's okay. We can just drop off all this stuff and uh, do some work inside. Absolutely. Um, also, the house that's in the distance we see there, that is Elias' house. It's perfect size for a young man. He bought that house from us. And we will be going up on the land, picking out a spot that we will put some tiny homes on. We're downsizing. We are downsizing. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and pull up into this rainy, 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 rainy spot. <laughs> I, I was curious as to what it was like here when it was raining. And so now I get a chance to see. I said I could imagine coming out here sitting on this porch and looking out here at this rain. It is pretty, isn't it? Uh-huh. Well, we did want to see what it looked like here while it was raining. And I must say, I could, I could see relaxing somewhere around here as well. I'm not about to walk over to the pond over there, it's just too wet. Had we been thinking we would have brought some umbrellas, but uh, I guess we were hoping that the sun would have showed up for us today, but nonetheless, it is beautiful. We are gonna have to walk a little bit in this. Hey baby. Yeah baby, so this is what it is. Yeah. Rain and work. <laughs> Well, at least we can sit on the porch and start cutting out some of that carpet that's in the house. Oh, so now the thunder wants to show up too. Not just rain, but thunder. Oh, okay. 
So I guess we'll be in here working today. I mean, we got some pretty, pretty nice rainfall coming down here. Start cutting this hideous carpet out of this place and I guess we'll start to um, just do what we can. Of course, we're going to gut the house and take all of this drywall and stuff out. We're going to start from the studs and put our own spin on things. A nice little starter home for our young man of his age. Perfect. As much as I love the rain because the garden loves it, I kind of feel like saying rain, rain, go away. <laughs> Come back another day or later on today perhaps. We got a lot of work to do here, but you know what? It's fun work. We enjoy this kind of work. We definitely do. And now having, having more land to move around on, that's going to be great. I'm just going to step out here in the rain just a little bit. When we were here last week, we actually um, just tilled out some small areas. We figured we would um, <clears throat> just put some watermelons out here to see what's going to happen. Um, we heard someone say that they had just threw some watermelon seeds in the field. They came back and had hundreds of watermelons. So we, um, we planted some in this area. It's fairly new, so it's not a lot. We also planted some pumpkins back over there and some butternut squash. So we shall see what happens in a few months. Anyway, let me get out of this rain real quick. I just pray that the Most High blesses us because we all were kind of under the weather a bit and working in the rain. Not sure that's a good idea. So we're going to try to limit our time out here in the rain. But there are a couple of things that we do need to accomplish in the rain. In the meantime, we're also going to continue with our turmeric soup, our vitamin C, and whatever other herbs that we've been taking and adding to our meals to kind of um, combat this a little bit. <clears throat> How you feel, baby girl? You're cold. Mommy, sorry. Well, you know what? I did tell Papa. I said it's going to rain for the next four days. But he was so anxious to get back here anyway. So, here we are. <laughs> that, that hat looks funny sitting on your head. That hat looks funny. Papa's hat looks funny too, don't it? Don't it? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. You don't think so? <laughs> Alaya. <clears throat> What's your honest opinion? Don't that hat look funny on Papa? <laughs> tell, the, tell the truth. Come on now. You don't think so? Well, I'll let him look at the video himself and let him tell the truth. <laughs> no, I didn't say you look crazy. I didn't say you look crazy. I said I said the hat looked funny. I just to keep out the rain. It's okay. You keep him, you keep him dry. <laughs> These kids too nervous to say it looks funny. Sophia's hat looks funny sitting on top of her head too. Okay. I guess this hat is looking strange on me too. Okay, um, where is your machete? See if you if you carry around the machete and you take the hat off, you'll look like Michonne from um what is that? The Walking Dead. Well, Sophia's reading in the rain to try to help pass by some time. Papa and Alaya are putting some things in the barn. So we're just sitting here on the porch, enjoying the rain until we get on the inside and start working. Some slaves run around, allow the leaves to work. 
to be a girl. <laughs> Did you know what he just said? He said he thought slaves weren't allowed to read books. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But it's, it's a shame, though, that um, here we are in this day and time, <coughs> and you would think you were still in slavery. <coughs> Then you look at the activities and the things that's going on. I know. I mean, you would absolutely think that we were still enslaved. Well, the thing is, they try to hide it, you know. They give you a couple of inches, you know what I'm saying? And some of our people, <coughs> unfortunately, <coughs> think that equates to freedom. Yeah. That they can drive around in a nice car, but just yesterday, there was a black man found hanging from a tree. Yeah. In Ohio. Uh, it, it says 1947. This is 1902. Yeah. No. This is, this is what? 2016? Yeah. Exactly. But yet, they tell us to get over it. And they think we all so stupid that we're supposed to buy that they said, oh, it was a suicide. So they determined that quick. Somebody shows up on the scene, oh, it looks like a suicide. They, I mean, it's just crazy. It's just crazy how everything is a suicide. Like the one kid who was wrapped up in the carpet, had his organs missing, right? Like that kid. And they, and they claim he suicide. So he killed what? He rolled himself up in the carpet. So what? He pooped his own organs out or something crazy like that? You know? And then the thing is, it's like that one. You got the one where the guy down in Texas was murdered. And they ruled that a suicide. Well, someone had posted on my page earlier about that, and um, <coughs> they were talking about how his tongue was cut out. Yeah, that's right. His clothes were missing, one sock on, he's down to his shorts only. So he and, so he undressed himself, cut and, his tongue out, and then killed and, him. And, and I think his throat was cut, too. Yeah. But it's a suicide. But, you know, that is the nature of this country, and I think for our people, that particular guy was married to a white woman too. Yeah. We got to talk about that. For our people, we got to understand that the most high is not playing with us. All day long, we can sit back and talk about what they are doing to us. Yeah. But someone had posted a scripture that um, kind of said that if you do things a certain way, and I got to look this up when I get home, that even your enemies <clears throat> will respect you. That's right. Something of that sort. But because we go up, go around as a people. Um, full of our, um, full of ourselves, full of our sins and our own ignorant pride. See, our pride is a little bit different than the pride of the Gentiles. Many of us feel like we don't have to do what the Most High say. Like, who are you to tell me what to do? Okay. So the Most High kind of shows us. <clears throat> he kind of shows us. If, if you keep walking in the opposite direction, the opposite direction of my will, um, your enemies are going to be a trap, a snare, and a thorn in your side. That's right. You know, it's really sad that it's that the people that, that we have to be this um, oppressed and people not see it. I mean, I thought about the other boy who was killed and was hung on the swing in the um, trailer park. Mm -hmm. He was hung on the swing, and they found his shoes missing. Which he wore very nice shoes, uh -huh. expensive shoes, but some 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 old full of shoes. Smaller shoes. Smaller shoes were laying there under under the things if those actually, were his shoes. Were, actually they had kind of crammed them on his feet. Crammed them on his feet a little bit. Like he hung himself with some two small shoes on. Yeah, you know, and it's like, come on now, it's like, you know <laughs> it's really sickening that that people are so um numb. And even our people are numb. A lot of our people don't even know about these stories. But they don't know? want to know. And then they don't, yeah, they don't want to know. Then when they hear about it, they go, why are you talking about that, though? That's not happening to me. Okay, then what, then what, what happens then when it happens to you? Or if it happens to you, you don't want somebody to talk about it, right? You don't want somebody to say something about it, right? And that's what the problems are. We're still dealing with this kind of thing here. And to me, it just don't make any sense. You the know? sad thing about it, I think what's going on is, some of our people think <clears throat> that if we talk about it, we just gonna make them more angry yeah. and make them want to go after, come after us more. That right there shows that there's a problem, man. Right. Like, it, 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 you got your own people. Um, like, um, 
Oh, well, stop talking about it. That was in the past. You know, you don't want to keep stirring up that um, old pot of stuff from the past. You know, it's like, well, then that's showing that there's a problem. If you're saying that it's that much dormant hatred inside of a person to where if you talk about something that they're going to snap off like a Hiroshima atomic bomb, and that's showing you that, that it really needs to be talked about. Yeah. That's that's like, like, it's like black mold in your house. Are you going to um, just let it sit there dormant under your carpet or something like that? Or are you going to root it and take it out? You know what I'm saying? My thing, my thing is, if it was a thing in the past, then fine. Okay. But, if it, but it's still going on. And that's my point, is that it's still going on. Do you know how many, how many um, deaths of black men that have been ruled suicide? We're talking about hangings. Even black women, for that matter, yeah, they black said women. that Tony Lamb was um, found yeah. hanging, hanging, and they said it was a suicide. So a young woman not too long after her was found hanging in a um, jail too, and they said suicide. Yeah. You see, and so it's really, it's really a trip because you're dealing with the people who have literally said, "What you gonna do about it?" My thing is, you know, you know what's amazing is these police officers are trained. They know. That when you go to jail, so when they bring somebody to jail to take their belts and other things so that the person can hang themselves. They know this. Okay? Now, why is it then that these people are still hanging? They, they come up with new ways that they hung, them, hung themselves. You know, they took the pants legs and they hung themselves on their pants or, or a garbage bag. Yeah, like somebody can actually hang that garbage bag. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, <clears throat> they're depending on the general ignorance of society to say, oh, they said they hung themselves, so case closed. Yeah, they're, they're looking at the case closed thing because most people don't care. And only people that do care can only reach so far with their words and, yeah. and all the marching ain't helping. Like, like I said, nobody fears the most high. <coughs> nobody fears judgment. It's just like the scripture said that they would begin to say, oh, I think he's forgotten. He's talking about the most high. They think that the Father has forgotten and that their sins and their wickedness, even those that are just straight up complicit with the evil, you know, because you have those who won't do anything about it. They say, well, I'm not doing it. That was my cousin. That was my brother. That was my neighbor. That happened over there. I didn't do it. <clears throat> but you're complicit with it. You don't care about it. And so it's because of that that the Most High is going to judge this nation. Right. Because they refuse to repent. They refuse to repent. And then they look at us and say, you're talking about it. You're stirring it up. Yeah. You see, and, and that's why we can't get over racism because of racist people like you talking about it. As if we don't have a right to grieve for our people. We don't have to or have a right to grieve for our loved ones. Many of us have people right in our own families who have been killed by some racist. But they expect us to shut up. That's another thing, too. They, like I said before, they, they talk about us as if our talking about racism is a, like it's a thing of the past or whatever, and like you should keep it in the past or whatever. My thing is, if you're that unstable, it's like, you mean to tell me if I just talk about something that has happened to somebody that I know, or I talk about a racist event that happened to me, or a loved one or something like that and it make and you're so unstable to where you're gonna go on a rampage, angry as I don't know what, shooting and killing people. That's not our fault. Right. Dude, you can't Why make it seem exactly. like we're the ones keeping racism alive and you're the one that's unstable going out shooting and killing people because you heard somebody black talking about racism. Now that's a good point you're making. That's that's the problem. If, if you're uh, hearing about these things causes that much anger in you, that is the problem. Not me talking about it. It's that rage that builds up. But see, the Most High, and I know a lot of people are getting tired of hearing about the Most High because there was a fellow, with a few people actually, who came on one of, one of our videos, and they were actually saying that. They're like, I'm tired of waiting on the Most High. I'm tired of waiting on God. Why are you, you know what I'm saying? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? It ain't nothing you can. What, what can you do? You know, you can just sit and say, yeah, I'm tired of, I'm tired of, tired of it, okay? So what you gonna do? You gonna organize and try to do something? What? You, you, you are outnumbered, outmanned, out, out everything. And out power, oh, because yeah. we can't do anything. We have to do just like our ancestors did. And I know a lot of people think we crazy as, I don't know what, for talking like this. But our ancestors, when they repented, 
and they cried out to the Most High, He showed up. Yeah. The whole world knows that the judgment of Yah has already been unleashed. That's why we see everything that the scripture is talking about in the book of Revelation and in the Old Testament where it talks about the end time judgment of this earth. It's already started to take place. <laughs> That's right. We see this stuff happening. So you're going to question the Most High? If he made a promise to us that he was going to deliver us out of the hands of our enemies, you can rest assured that it's going to happen. But it's going to be on his terms, not on our terms. Now, uh, you know what that means? Let me tell you what that means. Okay? Can you think about this for a minute, right? According to the scripture, in Exodus, the scripture says that when he heard the cries of his people that were in Egypt in those days, he heard their cries by reason of their taskmasters, is what he said. So then I will send a deliverer to deliver them and bless them because they cried out to him. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, right? When I look at us as a whole, I don't see us as a whole crying out no. for the most time. No. Like they did in Exodus. Because, see, the difference in Exodus and the difference now is this here, okay? You had those in Exodus. You had most of the people that in Exodus that were in Exodus were all laboring hard. Yeah. They were all had the, had the whip to them. They all were in hard bondage in Egypt. But see, the difference here, now we're in a time to where we're struggling, but we have homes, we have cars, you know what I mean? We have jobs, we make money, and we get a sense of, of the same freedom. Another thing, you know? too. Another, so we're not crying out by reason of it. That's right. Another problem we have as a people is we are best friends with Becky. Yeah, best friends Becky and Bob. Best, best, friends, Becky and Bob. Best, best friends with the taskmaster. <laughs> yeah, so it's like if you if you best buddies with those who are doing certain things to your people, you're gonna look at your people like you shouldn't have did this, that, or the other. And what what else happened in Exodus? Let's analyze Exodus for a minute, right? What else happened? <laughs> Moses, who was best buddies with the taskmaster. Moses, who was a part of the system, right? The taskmaster system. Moses, who was part of the leaders of the taskmaster system, when he discovered and found out what was truly going on, what did he do? The scripture says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. So what he did was most, but so this is what our people are not doing. We got too many of us that's enjoying the pleasures of sin. We're enjoying being, being uh, right there next to the taskmaster, being a part of this whole system that's keeping God's people um, in bondage. And you know the term that we call those kind of people. You know the term, you know. The one who eats you want to cool snacks all yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, right. You know, that's what we call them, you know, because what they do is they'll they'll be the person that's right there by NASA, helping NASA beat us, keep us in line, and everything else. And that's what the problem is. They're not choosing whether to suffer affliction with us. And yeah. but they want to enjoy the pleasure of sin. So those are the two incident things that we that we don't see and not try to happen. So then what do most have? What does he have to do? He said, Come out of her, my people. That you be not partakers of her sins and you receive not of her punishments and plagues. So in other words, I'm gonna punish and I'm gonna plead. And if you are part of this system, if you are part of this whole thing, then you're gonna get it too. Yeah. So that's what that's what the problem is. We're not willing to come out from among them. We're too tangled up in tight with them, you know. The minute you say something against a, a white person, uh, um, uh, you know, Mike, the first thing you do, you have a person, a black person, come against you on it. And it's like, well, um, uh, well, my friend Tom isn't like that. Well, then maybe we're not talking about your friend Tom. We're talking about the majority of them that sit back and they watch the persecution of our people on a daily basis and they ignore it. And they are completely untouched by it. Untouched they, they hear something it. about a um, black man hanging in Ohio and they say, oh, a black man was found hanging in Ohio. Oh, they said it was a suicide. How unfortunate. Next. Yeah, yeah. They don't care. Exactly. But for us, we know what time it is, and we know that that wasn't a suicide. Like the 12-year-old girl 
she got the rope burns on her neck because some white kids decided to put a rope around her neck. Nah. And they said, oh, we were just playing. Oh, oh, they, we weren't trying to hang her, but it burned her neck so bad to where it dug down into her skin. And because, because you have them and everybody saying it wasn't on purpose, it was a mistake. Yeah. That three white boys put a rope around her neck and the girl, only 12, she couldn't believe what was happening, so she asked him, did you all do this for a purpose? And because they said, no, she's 12. Of course, she's, she don't want to believe that her classmates were trying to hurt her or kill her or hang her. Yeah, but when you look at the, the, the images, just look at the images of her throat. When you look at the gash, the deep gashes of her throat like that, Right, when you look at that, you cannot tell me that somebody can inflict that kind of harm on a 12 year old and tell me it that, was it was a, that it was a mistake and that it wasn't intentional. It's like you gotta get out of your mind. Here's what's sick about it. <clears throat> Had she died, that would have been ruled a suicide as well. Oh, yeah, they would have found a way to say, yeah. oh, she went on her class field trip and decided to hang herself. And look, 30. 30 um, white kids, they all stood and watched her kill herself. They all witnessed this suicide. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Again, we're dealing with an unrepentant people. The scripture says that your sins have reached unto heaven, O daughter of Babylon. And even those of you who want to pretend like you don't see anything, pretend like nothing has happened, the Most High has judgment in store. Unless you repent. He says, for, even for Jezebel, he said, I gave her the space to repent, and she repented not to. Yep. And that's the same thing that's happening with uh, the children of the Gentiles. He's given them space to repent, but they just need to get Yeah. It's sad, though, that um, this is what, what, what things that have become, and you know, the people are just so numb, you know. You know what's funny? For all of the black folks that have been hung over the past um, 10 years, it's been hundreds of them. You hear what I'm saying? It's been hundreds of them. Now, I bet if those were horses, you know, if you looked around and each time you're man, another horse just got hung in Texas, you know? Another horse just got hung in Ohio. We found another horse. Are y'all gonna rule that suicide? No. And they'll be like, no. who's killing all of these poor horses? Poor horses? It'd be who's so much doing sympathy. this? It'd oh be my so God. much sympathy for the horse until people will come out of all kinds of places to try to help these horses. You'll have, you, you have Europeans coming out of other countries. You know, Remember it's, poor Cecil the Lion? Yeah, Cecil the Lion. Yeah, oh, exactly. when he got killed, all hell broke loose. Everybody yeah. was going to look for the doctor who did it. Yeah, you know. Uh, uh, people uh, all over the world. Yeah, you know, but Michael Brown gets killed, and everybody like, oh, oh well. Next case, you have Michael Brown and a lion walking out, shooting that cop, and those are fire on his head. You know, and let's say he was chained up in a cage on the back of a trailer or something. He was shot in the you know, and, and all hell was broken. Yeah. This whole country came to get that out, so you didn't get it so fast. You'll hear it this thing. Well, that's how it is, you know, that's just how it is. Well, I think. But anyway, it's... Okay, maybe we'll get started on the confidence. Maybe we can get that out of the way, pull that out, and, um... What happens after that would probably take us about an hour, you think? Ten minutes? Both rooms. Both rooms. Ten minutes. Fifteen minutes. Okay, the countdown is on. What that is. Okay, so we'll be done with the project at 12. 17. All right, go get me the flyer. We'll take 12. Well, the whole time we were here, it rained and it poured down. As you see, the sky is clearing up now. <laughs> but we still got a lot done. We got all that carpet out. It took a lot longer than what we thought. 
but um, we, we've gotten all of it out. I think it's just a little bit of padding left. The other day when we were here, we were able to finish up this project that we had started. We had put in this fence here and some fence post and our little private property sign here. We have to fill the holes back in from where the cement was poured, the concrete or whatever you want to call it. But the fence is basically a deterrent to keep anyone from just driving up on the land. You can't just drive up on the land. There's going to be this gate that's going to block you and stop you from doing that. But again, there's lots of work going on here. Didn't get it. Looks like the sun is trying to peek out just in time for us to leave, huh? <laughs> We didn't get a chance to finish everything we wanted today, but we got a lot done. That's good enough for me. Okay, now we have packed up the trailer to, to head back home. We unloaded everything that we're going to leave here. Locking up everything so we can head back home. Now we have to do some damage control for all this working in the rain and the warm, I'm sorry, the cool weather, especially for you. And sometimes you don't like to listen. So we're gonna make sure you get you some turmeric soup, some vitamin C, some orange juice, and all of that stuff. You got that? You got that? Okay, just so you know, I ain't playing with you. Okay, we are ending our day of work here and heading back home. So here we go. On our way up the road, leaving the land, heading home. Out of the darkness into the marvelous light. So glad to be coming up out of the storm. Still raining just a little bit, but there are brighter skies ahead. Told I am.